Hey Aposka from Orange Pixel, welcome to another video. Last week's video, I had a lot of fun trying to incorporate multiplayer into Regulated City. Still an ongoing project. I think the proof of concept, having it work, um, pretty much the communication between the two computers, that kind of worked at the end of the video. After that, I've been tinkering with it more and more, improving various things, so they're now always in sync to the exact frame of the game loop, so the exact simulation. Uh, there are still some little discrepancies in the simulation. But for this week, I needed something more creative, uh, less diving into all these numbers. So Gauntlet of Power, my other game that got released a few months ago, needs a new update. I think I'm a few weeks behind on my own schedule, uh, but that's how these things go. Over time, a game doesn't receive as much updates or many updates as possible. But that's kind of how these things go. Uh, over time, Gauntlet of Power will become less interesting to receive new updates from me as most of my time will be on new projects that hopefully make enough money to keep going with the next game and the next and the next but for now we're still gonna push a new update i've been working on that already a little bit i have a new character that i want to introduce in this update the thief and this is another one of these videos that's going to be recorded during the week so it's now monday afternoon i'm going to start with some pixel art but i also have some code to add i have some new enemies i want to introduce and i want to introduce a new world to the game not sure if i can do all these things before thursday as this video will go live well we'll find out together after the intro So the new character will be the Thief, um, his base weapon will be Knives, which wasn't assigned to any of the other characters yet. And this is how he will look in a normal version. Now I need to create two other versions for him, uh, a hard mode and an easy mode version. So let's start doing some pixel pushing. And I'm using GIMP for this, mostly because it's just a free tool. It's been available on Windows, Linux, Mac, it's everywhere, it's free. It's easy, uh, there are other tools, doesn't matter what you use, just get things done. So that was a lot less work than I thought it would be. Um, it did help that I already created the Thief character a few weeks ago, but then all the other projects started coming in. Uh, other projects just kept grabbing my attention so I couldn't really complete it. I also added achievements for this character. There are three modes on which you can complete the game. Um, there's one thing left. You have to unlock this character somehow. But I haven't really decided how. The other two characters that you unlock can be unlocked using tokens that you find in specific um, situations of the game. I'm not spoiling those. So I think I'm gonna have to find a, a couple more. There are four tokens you need, so four more ways to find those tokens to unlock the thief. Now, since I have time left on my Monday, it's only 2 p.m., I'm gonna start the next task, which I was planning for tomorrow. In Regulator City, the other game, I have a Medusa-like creature that slides around and that locks you in your spot or makes you go very slow as she makes eye contact. And I think that character would fit very well in the Gaunt of Power. Of course, all my games are linked and interconnected. And this is the reason why, because this makes it very, a lot of fun, first of all, to just link these games up in a way. People playing all my games will recognize this character and then figure, oh, I know what this is gonna do and I know how to avoid it. And I've seen this character before. Uh, but also for me as a developer, I get to copy and paste code from one game into the other probably have to modify things here and there although a lot of my code base is the same so with some luck this might actually be like 30 minutes of work and we will have a new enemy in Gauntlet of Power. I also want to bring over the little ooze worms that I added in Regulator City um, just because why not so let's 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 just dive in let's just copy paste the code and see where we are with error messages. I don't expect this all to work just fine. Uh, I got rid of all the errors so far and I just copy and paste it. But I know that I use a weird trigger system. Well, not a weird trigger system. I use a trigger system in Regulator City that I don't use in Gauntlet of Power. So right now Medusa can move around, probably. 
uh, because that code should be the same, but she cannot really do any harm or anything uh, towards the player yet. I have to rewrite that part of the code. But as you can see this way, I can really quickly move stuff between games and that's just using the same framework and the same work methods in all my games. And I could probably do something like this to a 10 year old game or a 15 year old game. Um, it should still be fairly easy to quickly implement certain things from one game into another. It does make it a lot easier for me to push updates and content updates to older games. Guns of Power is now a few months old. This is the third bigger update that I'm working on. Um, to make that viable for me as a solo game developer, I just need to be able to do this quickly. I need to find the least friction in how to make the most content for an update. And this is one of those methods. So let's see how Medusa is acting in the game. Let's quickly start a new game. Let's pick the thief, the new character. Doesn't matter what we do. Uh, hop, 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 skip, skip, skip. All right, now let me spawn Medusa and her number is 44. So monster 44 brings us something very weird on screen. Obviously I'm not using the right visual stuff because that's not looking like the Medusa I know and love. Medusa is, as you can see, I actually sneakily uh, changed her colors already in between the takes. So um, she's at 720. Oh, of course, I just copy pasted the coordinates from the other texture atlas. That doesn't make sense. She's there. Let's, let's try this again. Now I could cut this all out and just show you that I'm perfect whenever I do something, but I'll leave it in just to show you that I'm far from perfect and I make stupid mistakes. Yeah, perhaps nobody actually doubted that except me, but now we all know the truth. Okay, let's let's dive in. So quickly start a new game. Here we go. New game. Uh, take the thief. Uh, play normal mode. Skip it. Do that. Skip it all. Add a Medusa monster to the mix. Uh, using the right button presses. Monster forty four. Yeah, I'm I'm just silenced by why. What's the white area? around her and why is she moving to the corner all right that's a matter of coordinations uh, she's moving to a corner that doesn't exist in this game she shouldn't uh, multiply this by 16 that's way too far that's always going to be at the bottom right corner let's see what happens if we update that part of her there she moves and now she's moving except the weird whiteness surrounding her Oh wait, that's she's calling special effects that are not in this game. Okay, so she's not perfect yet. There's stuff happening um, around her, but that special effects I had in Regulator City, which I don't have in God of Power, so weird images are being projected. Got to remove that. Got to make sure she can actually um, shoot sound waves at the player that will lock the player in its place. It's very simple stuff to add. So I'm not expecting that to take a lot of time. And it's now 30 minutes since I started on Medusa's stuff. I can sneak in these worms as well. I'll be back in a sec. Just hang on. Breezing through the Monday, we now have Medusa moving around. We have the worms. I copied them from Regulator City as well. Um, needed very little work. Just a different type of ooze they leave behind. But they already have that in the game from another creature. So they are now sharing this. And it's all working. That means we added two characters to the game. We have a new playable character in the game. And it's just 3 p.m. So the next thing I'm going to do is add those tokens to the game so that you can actually unlock the thief because then that whole chapter is done. We have the achievements, we have the playable character, we have his weapons, we have the tokens. And that should be enough for that character unless I forgot something. But I hopefully uh, will remember that before I push the game live. And since I then still have some time, I'm going to edit the first part of this video. And then dive a little bit into Regulator City. That's going to be something I do in between things. And I'm now on a roll as well. But I don't want to start on the next task until it's Tuesday. So I'm just going to use a little extra time for Regulator City today. And on Tuesday I'll dive into the whole new world. We're going to add a whole new world to Gone of Power. I think I already have graphics for it from Haragoshi. Who sent me some tile sets. I think I'm going to use those. But we'll see how that ends. 
on Tuesday. Tuesday morning is almost over. I've been digging into the new realm, um, decided not to call it a sandy or desert realm, but a temple. It looked more like a temple and I can tie it to the quest monks that we already have in the game. And I'm not going to say too much because then I'll be spoiling how you get to the temple. I've added two new creatures as well. Grab them from Sir Questionnaire. Um, that game is also in the same timeline area as Heroes of Loot. Beetles and crabs, they, not the beetles like the musicians, but the creature, beetles, and some crabs. Also the creatures, not the other one. They are now added to the temple. And um, so we got the temple, also added the entrance to get there, which is now a sort of a portal. Not gonna spoil how you find it, but once you do, you'll get into that temple and now we'll have to create an end boss. Thingy. I'm thinking about like something like a big sandworm because I kind of like adding those to all my games. And Gauntlet of Power doesn't have one yet, so I'm probably gonna try to draw a sandworm type thing that's gonna serve as a end boss, and then we'll have to figure out what kind of treasure you'll find in the temple. Haven't figured that one out just yet, but I'll do that after lunch. I think uh, I'll, I'll let it brew a little bit. So the sandworm is now completely added to the game and pulling everything together, the temple, the new character, the sandworm, end boss, all these little creatures, the crabs and the beetles. We now have a whole new world. And I based Sandy, the end, new end boss, on Slugger, which also had these segmented body parts, except this one jumps at you. Um, its visuals are somewhat copied from Slugger. But again, this is how I create these updates pretty quickly and how it's still doable for me as a solo game developer to actually update older games with new content. It's just grabbing bits and pieces from uh, the code that's already there, the graphics I already have for this or other games, and trying to fit it within the current game engine so that I don't have to write too much code, but can actually reuse a lot of it. And the end result is still the same for a player. There's just more of what's already there. And I will try to come up with ideas that fit into existing things so that I don't have to write too much code and uh, can just add new content for the player. Now the new, the new end boss also needed new artwork and high resolution uh, splash screen because every boss splashes onto the screen. So just quickly drawing that out based on the low resolution images, uh, scaling it up a little bit and then drawing it by hand. And it's only gonna be on the screen for like at five to 10 seconds. I just need something that makes splash, makes an impact. And then we'll have this new end boss available. I also settled on a new friendly or familiar, whatever you want to call it, that will actually be a walking around, randomly around you. Uh, the other one were fairies. They fly around you and they attack enemies that are the nearest to you. But this guy will just run around a little bit. It's like a little crabby type thing that you can unlock in the temple and it will follow you around. And he will use those scissor hands to snap at enemies. So um, we also now have a new familiar added to the game. And it's now Tuesday, 3 p.m. So I'm gonna edit this video up to this point and maybe dive back into Regulator City for a bit. And tomorrow I, I might actually wrap up the new update already, um, unless I can come up with some new things to add to the game. Maybe some new level layouts, that could work. But I'm pretty sure I'll figure out something to do on Wednesday. The end of Wednesday morning already. Um, Change of plans actually, where you have to go to my dad's place later today, which is a three hour drive, and then we'll take him with us for the coming couple of days, which means I have to wrap up this update. So I've been creating a update image. This image I will use for uh, the update on Steam, but also on the Earth's Pixel website. I like to create these images based on uh, the graphics from the game instead of using high resolution artwork mainly because I have new graphics to show. It shows the new content for the game, but it's also a lot easier than having to create high resolution artwork because this is already made for the game. So let's create a low pixel resolution like scenery. We will use that for the update post. It also means I've been playtesting the game most of this morning. Um, I've removed one or two bugs that I actually introduced by adding a new boss and a new temple for area. So. It's a good thing to test and um, it's also the downside of doing an update. You have a game that's well bug free for as far as I know. Nobody was complaining about bugs, but now I introduce new things to the game and I could also introduce a new bug to the game. So I hope 
I squashed all the new stuff out of it. Still gonna do a few more tests. Uh, luckily, it's a fun game to play, actually. So if you haven't played it, check out Grant of Power. Now, I'm not sure when I will push the update. Uh, all I have to do now is wrap up this video so that I can uh, properly edit it, uh, create a thumbnail for it, and then schedule it in so that it goes live on Thursday while I'm not at home. And then maybe on Friday, I'll push the Gaunt of Power update version 1.4. I might also push that to like next week, somewhere next week, depending on how much testing I get done uh, the rest of the day. I only have a few hours left, so uh, we'll see. Sometimes plans just take a completely different direction. So I also have to prepare the guest room. <sighs> I better start editing this video. For now, I just want to thank you for watching the video. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment below. Uh, check out Gauntlet of Power, maybe that's even more important. Check it out on Steam, give it some play sessions and don't forget to review it on Steam, also very important. Switch version, still in development, uh, Series Lion is squashing out a lot of bugs we have there. Uh, mobile version, haven't decided yet what to do with it, but it's, I guess it's coming at some point. So there's still a lot of things going on for Gauntlet of Power. But for now, thanks for watching, bye.